Royal Caribbean gives everybody the chance to upgrade their cabin via the Royal Up program. Basically, you place a bid, and if there's availability and they accept your bid, Royal Caribbean gives you a better room, theoretically, for a cheaper price. And it sounds like this is a great deal, but I actually think there are a couple of ways why losing that cruise ship upgrade bid might actually be a good thing. I think it's fair to say a lot of people dream about being able to move up to a bigger and more lavish cabin. Whether it's from an inside to a balcony cabin or all the way up to a suite, who wouldn't want to pay less and get a nicer room? But the old saying, if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is, sometimes holds up when it comes to bidding for a cabin upgrade. Royal Caribbean allows you to place a bid for a nicer room, potentially at a cheaper price than booking that cabin outright. However, there are some downsides to Royal Up that you should know about before placing your bid on there. And so what I wanted to talk about today is the reasons why you might want to skip Royal Up completely, or at least if you lose your bid, you feel better about that fact. Number one, when you lose the bid upgrade, there's less stress because there's no more guessing what'll happen. When you place a bid for a cabin upgrade, it's a binding contract, assuming that Royal Caribbean accepts it. The problem is you really have no idea when exactly Royal Caribbean might or might not accept it, and then they can actually accept bids all the way up until the day of your sailing. Now, I'm not sure there's a lot of anxiety with that, but it kind of leaves you in limbo a little bit, trying to figure out, will they accept it, will they not? I'm gonna stay in this room, am I moving up to a nicer room? Some people who are going from a balcony or at least a standard room up to a suite wanna know if they're gonna get that bid accepted because there are some ramifications, like if they're gonna move up to a suite, maybe they cancel that dining package or the drink package, depending on what their situation is. So when it comes to doing a stateroom bid upgrade, you're kind of in that limbo, not sure what to expect until Royal Caribbean ever confirms whether or not your bid has been accepted or not. Number two, it also saves money for something else. Now, depending on how much money you're spending on the Royal bid upgrade, whether it's a great deal or not, it's extra money that's gonna come out of your vacation budget. And so if you have more money that you're not spending on a Royal Caribbean stateroom upgrade, you can use that money for other things like a drink package, dining package, an amazing shore excursion. You know, there's so many potential add-ons with a cruise vacation, and inevitably, I think more people look at the ways to really enhance their overall trip. Now, certainly, a nicer cabin is a great way to do that, but by the same token, you might also say a great shore excursion or being able to splurge for dining or certain activities on board might equally be of interest to you. Again, depending on your style and interest and all those kinds of things, that can be something to consider. Another thing to think about before placing that bid for a Royal Up upgrade is you cannot pick your room location. For a lot of people, picking the best rooms on a cruise ship means having control of exactly where the room is located, but you're gonna give that up with Royal Up. When you place a bid for a room upgrade, you let Royal Caribbean pick the specific cabin assigned to you if you win the bid. There's no option to choose between cabins and it's akin to basically a guaranteed room assignment in that regard. You couldn't end up with a room that is at the far end of a hallway. And not only does that mean a longer walk to the elevators, but also potentially an issue if you're prone to motion sickness. A midship cabin is preferable for a lot of people, especially to anybody who's concerned about getting seasick. Likewise, your winning bid might end up with a room near a public venue, and that could get noise bleed that keeps you up at night or awake in the morning. Ideally, you want a room that is above or below other cabins and away from bars, pools, or other noisy venues. There are some people who are not very picky about the room location, especially if they're getting a better cabin at a cheaper price. Just be clear about the fact that you let the cruise line pick your specific cabin should your bid be accepted. And then of course, there's the fact that bidding for a cruise ship cabin upgrade is a complete guess. You really shouldn't get your hopes up because there seems to be no pattern to how actually to win a room upgrade bid. The program is similar to a silent auction where the cruise line sets the minimum bid and you make a bid without knowing what anyone else's bid. Heck, you don't even know if there are actually any open cabins to be upgraded into. While the Royal Caribbean Up website provides a very easy to understand bid evaluator that ties a higher price to an increased chance at winning, the reality is max bids don't always win and plenty of people have won upgrades with a minimum bid. As they say, you can't win if you don't play, but the whole process could give you just false hope of moving up and leave you disappointed in the end. The next reason why you shouldn't do a Royal Up upgrade is if you have more than one cabin booked, especially if you have more than one cabin booked and they're connecting or adjoining or adjacent rooms. One of my favorite strategies for cruising with a family is to book two connecting cabins instead of one room. But this idea is incompatible with Royal Up. You can certainly place bids for both rooms, 
but there's no promise if you win both rooms that they'll get upgraded or that the winning bid will be anywhere near your other room, even if you booked connecting cabins. Moreover, let's say you win a bid for one room to move up to a spacious suite. You cannot move the people from the other room into the upgraded cabin and or cancel the other room without a penalty. So in short, if you have more than one cruise ship cabin booked and you care about being anywhere near each other, rail up would be a mistake for you. I'd also point out, speaking of mistakes with rail up, is that if you book a specific subcategory of a cabin, if you do your research and you spot certain special rooms that are quite rare and in high demand, placing our bid to upgrade your room means foregoing those rooms. As an example, Royal Caribbean's family cabins offer significantly more space and separate sleeping areas for kids along with an extra bathroom. Technically, these are inside or ocean view rooms and bidding may actually get you in a higher category, but in a smaller room with less space. There are other really highly popular rooms out there that a lot of people absolutely love. There are, of course, the hump balconies, that's a colloquial term for it, which is basically cabins that are on the outward part of the curvy outline of the ship. If you look at a deck plane, you'll notice around midship, the hull design jets outwards. And on many ships, these balcony cabins are significantly larger than other cabins, but the price may be the same. You'll find hump balcony rooms with massive balconies on Radiance Class, Voyager, Freedom, Oasis, or Quantum Class, so you want to look closely at the deck plan. But again, if you book roll up, that might not be available for you. Then there's the aft balconies. And they're kind of similar to the hump balconies in the sense that you get a much larger balcony space than in a standard balcony room. And again, moving from a balcony to suite might seem like a great idea, but you might actually end up with a smaller balcony space, especially if you need your homework. And then one of my favorite value rooms out there are the extra large Central Park balcony rooms. There are two Central Park balcony rooms on every deck of an Oasis class ship that almost double the width of the balconies with the same cost as other Central Park balcony staterooms. They're located on a deck 10, 11, and 12, and they're either in room 229 or 629. And basically, the reason why these rooms have extra balcony space is there's no actual cabin next door because that area is used by Royal Caribbean for something else, storage or something to that effect. So again, having these cabins and then doing a rail up to a higher category may seem like a good idea, but you might end up with a smaller space altogether. And then of course, there's also the issue of crown and anchor points. Because if you booked a balcony and then move up to a suite with a winning Royal Up bid, you don't actually get the bonus crown and anchor points. Royal Caribbean gives suite guests an extra point per night in its loyalty program for booking a suite. But that only applies if you actually book a suite from the beginning. Those that book a standard cabin, but end up in a suite because of Royal Up, will still only get one point per night. Now, if you don't care about moving up the loyalty program ranks as much as you care about which cabin you stay in, then you can safely ignore this advice. But there are a lot of good reasons to try to get a higher status in Crown and Anchor Society. I'm very fond of saying I don't cruise for status, and I don't think it's a good idea for that. But at the end of the day, if you have the opportunity to get extra points and move up the Crown and Anchor Society ladder a little bit faster, I do think that is advantageous. So there you have it, some reasons why not winning that Royal Up cabin bid might not be a bad idea. Let me know in the comments what you think of it and is it worth it to you to do a Royal Up bid? I'm looking forward to hearing your comments and your thoughts on whether or not it's worth it. While you're below our video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.